How you guys doing? This is Derek Dillon Woodworking. Uh, in this video, this is going to be a little bit different than our typical videos. Um, I'm going to be showing you my work trailer and the lighting system that I have for the work trailer. So what's unique about this is it's all powered off of a Milwaukee 18 volt battery. Um, <clears throat> so I actually already shot parts of this video and I ended up having to redesign the system because there were some things I didn't really realize. The lights that I'm using are uh, Tresco lights. <clears throat> Tresco's uh, a really good brand, some really great lights that they make. I use them in a lot of our kitchens. Um, and what it is, it's a 12 volt light system. <clears throat> the lights are 12 volt and you have to buy a power supply. And the power supply takes a regular 15 or 20 amp circuit in your house, turns it into 12 volt and then it sends 12 volt to the lights. Now, I didn't realize that that wasn't going to work with the 18 volt battery. <clears throat> so what I ended up doing is I had to ditch the power supply. I had this all wired in. Um, I had the schematic dr drawn out. I was going to show you guys that schematic and it did not work. What I did was I ditched the power supply and I ran the lights directly to uh, my circuit and then they'd light up. But the, th the problem is I was sending somewhere between like 15 and 20.8 volts, something around in there, um, to the lights, which is over 12 volts, obviously. And it worked, but there's a really good chance that I would burn the lights out relatively quick. Who knows? It could last a week, could last five years. I don't know. I didn't really want to do that because the lights are kind of expensive. Um, so what I did was um, I purchased one of these which it's going to be in the schematic. Maybe I'll throw that up somewhere. I don't know. Um, I am going to throw the schematic up so that you can screenshot it. Maybe I'll do that right now. This side, I don't know, wherever. Um, and that'll be showing you how I wired it all, what I did. Um, but this is the system. This I had to add in. I'm going to add this in tonight. And the lights should be done at this point. Um, but what this is, this is a step-down converter. What it's going to do, I believe it takes anywhere from 6 to, uh, I don't know what this is going to say. It's like 6 to, I don't know if it's 50 volts, something like that. Um, it takes any one of those volts that's going into it, and then it sends out 12 volt. So you could put a 20 volt battery into it. You could put whatever you want into it, as long as it's within that parameter, and it'll send out only 12 volt. So I got that to protect the lights, um, and so I'm going to see how well this works tonight. Now, another thing to note, everything that I used here, pretty much everything I got off Amazon, and I'm going to put links to pretty much all of that um, in the description. So the only things that like I didn't get on Amazon were like these. I got these from Home Depot, um, and maybe even the wire. I think I did a... Uh, I did this wire from Home Depot, 17 foot, it was 14 gauge. Um, and what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what I wired so far. Don't get too confused, I, I only bought the black wire from Home Depot. So I used black wire for both the positive and negative or neutral. Um, so I know a lot might not be a fan of that, but it's what I had. Didn't feel like buying two different colors. Um, so yeah. We'll dive right into this in a minute. One thing I am going to note is um, in this system, I did a low voltage disconnect. Um, now, a typical, you know, Milwaukee power tool and battery have a system in it that when the battery gets too low, it tells the battery to shut off or whatever, and it makes it so the battery does not <clears throat> overdraw or draw too low, that it damages the battery. Doing something like this, there's nothing that protects the battery. There's nothing that says that to the battery and whatnot. So the disconnect, you can set it so that if it drops below like 14 volts or whatever you want, um, it'll disconnect. And when it goes above 14.2, it'll turn back on. Stuff like that. So I got that to protect the battery. Um, I also put a toggle switch in. One thing I didn't realize <clears throat> is that with the uh, low voltage disconnect it draws power all the time apparently um, 
and even if it didn't, uh, even if it shuts off, I think it still draws some. So what I did was straight out of my battery saddle adapter, whatever you want to call it, my positive line, I ran right to a toggle so that I could leave a battery in there. I don't want to leave a battery out each time I walk in. I got to clip the battery and then turn it on. I made it so that the toggle switch is on the side, which I'm going to show you in a second. And then I just hit the toggle switch on, sends the battery to the system, and then I can turn the switch on. So let's dive into this. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I have. Um, and then I will show you what I have to change out. So right now what I have is, obviously this is the battery, comes in. The neutral line goes right to the disconnect. My positive line comes in, goes to the toggle, and then it goes to the disconnect. So this is my input, input into the disconnect. So that, like I said, makes it so that I can hit this toggle over here. That turns it on, off. So I can completely disconnect everything directly from the battery. So that there's nothing else drawing power. So that hopefully I can leave a battery in here. And if it draws anything, it's going to be super, super small. So my input into the disconnect. And then I exit out of the disconnect. And then I ran, I ran all the, the neutrals together. This is kind of like a spaghetti mess. But have the neutral from the disconnect. The neutral from the switch, the neutral from the dimmer, all the neutrals are just tied together. But the positive, the positive comes out of the disconnect, runs right into my switch, which this goes here, runs right in my switch. Um, and so I'm powering the switch. Now, from the specific switch that I have turning on, which is going to be this this one right here, I come out of that switch hit the dimmer, come out of the dimmer, and go right to the first light, which goes up through here. Um, that's what I have right now, and it does work. Um, if I turn the power on, shows me that that's on. It also powers my lights, and then you can see that the light's turned on. Now, this is reading 20.4, 20.5 volts. My, dis my disconnect is reading 13.7, 13.8. I think something might be wrong with this disconnect. So I went on Amazon last night or two nights ago and I ordered a couple more disconnects and I'm gonna change this out to see if this makes a difference or maybe it's just always offset by a little bit, which that's that's pretty far to be offset. I mean, that's like six or seven volts different, um, which is a huge difference. So now I'm going to come out of, I'm gonna come out of the toggle now I'm going to go into the disconnect. When I come out of the disconnect, that's when I'm going to put this into that circuit. So I'm going to install this probably down in here, something like that. Go in and out of this so it converts it to 12 volt. But I want to put this after the disconnect to make sure that um, I'm protecting the battery and I know it's going to shut off at like 14.1. I did talk to somebody who knows a decent amount of batteries, a uh, de decent amount about batteries. I actually sent him a 12.0 um, M18 battery to, to fix because it wouldn't go past three bars and it was not working properly. And so he knows the voltage per each battery bank or whatever it is inside. And he said um, pretty much be safe to make it so that it didn't go below. Um, I can't remember the exact numbers. So I'm going to hit this in the next part of the video to make sure that I'm not telling you the wrong numbers. Okay, so I just changed out the uh, disconnect with a new one before we were seeing 13.7, 13.8. Now when I turn it on, it's reading 20.1. So this is a faulty disconnect. Um, maybe if you're gonna do it within like 30 days of buying the stuff, maybe buy two and then try both of them and see what they read. Um, I ordered this a while ago and I ordered the exact same one from the company and that one works and this one does not. So uh, a little disappointed in this one, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of funky, it didn't work. But at least I have one that does work now. So now that I know that it's pretty close, this is reading 20.4, 20.1. I'm not gonna uh, split hairs here. So to visit back to what I was talking about before about the disconnect, 
Now, he said that 14.5 volts at the disconnect should be very safe. He said it should be able to go down to 13.5 volts. So, how to set this. I don't know a ton about this, but I'm going to try this. You're supposed to be able to hit this twice. Okay. The disconnect is 12. Now, I want this to be set at 14.5 volts. Okay, 14.5. Leave it for a minute. Now, that's what it's going to be disconnect, disconnect at. Now, if I hit this twice, okay, now the little button is blinking. I don't know why you got to like keep hitting it a bunch and trying it. I'm going to go down to 0.5 because that's going to be the difference. So what that just means is 14 and a half, it disconnects. 0.5 is the difference. So... 14.5 plus 0.5 is going to be 15. That's when it's going to turn back on. Now, when I turn my lights on, which, here we go, turn it on, go all the way up, you can see the volts go down because it's drawing that much power right now. Now, I don't want to go too crazy. So that says 19.8, 20.2, it's within four. It is within four. So I'm going to shut this off. Um, like I said, to protect the lights, my next step is I'm going to add this into the circuit. Okay, I just completely finished wiring it in. Now, uh, before I finish it, I'm going to or show you the, the working and working progress. I'm going to show you. So this is the dimmer I bought. It is a 12 volt dimmer. Uh, this is the Nylite switch I bought. It's got two switches and a uh, the USB charger here. Um, I don't know. I just thought it'd be kind of nice if I wanted to, uh, to charge something. It also shows the volts, which I thought would be nice knowing that, like, not sure if that's accurate, whatnot. Um, <clears throat> the toggle switch is on the side. So toggle switch, um, threw that in there. Now, a couple things about these Nylite switches. So there's a, there's a bunch of positive, uh, wires here. Now you can plug these into the bottom if you want. Now what that does, I'll pop the battery in this thing. Now what that does is it makes it so that this bottom light is on. Now, if you want that so that it doesn't come on, so you don't have that constant draw, you can unplug the bottom right positive wires and that'll, that'll turn off. Just unplug this one, this is off now. So if you want to make it so that it is drawing the least amount of power, you can unplug that, you can unplug this, and then what I'm probably going to do is just leave this unplugged too so that it doesn't show me the volts. I'm not going to charge anything all the time. That's going to be a once in a while thing. So I'm going to leave that off. If I want to charge something, I can open this up, plug this in, and it'll be fine. So this looks like total spaghetti, but I'll walk through this. So I come out of the battery like I said before I got an inline fuse I just figured it'd be safe to do uh that's also pretty cheap I want to say they're like 10 bucks I think it came with three of them or something like that went into the toggle switch uh with the positive positive comes out of the toggle switch and goes right into the disconnect now the negative comes right out of the battery right to the disconnect so right now I'm going from the battery to the toggle, to the disconnect. I come out of the disconnect and my power and negative both go into the step down here. Then I come out of the step down and from this point, my, my neutrals or my negatives are gonna all connect. So I got this spaghetti here, connects to the um, neutral here, to the neutral of my light, to the neutral of the dimmer, and the neutral of the switch. So all of those are tied together. This, I actually soldered this and uh, shrink wrapped it. You probably don't really have to do that. I also used all these so everything can be unplugged, plugged back in. It came in handy when I just had to revamp the system and I could just unplug stuff and redo it. And it was not bad at all. Um, 
So yeah, then the positive comes out of this. It powers the entire switch. And that's where the power technically ends there. Now the switch from the specific switch I'm gonna use coming out into the dimmer, the other side out of the dimmer into the light. And then it goes up into the lights and the lights are daisy chained together. Uh, so that's everything here. Now, I guess we have to, uh, I guess we kind of have to put it all in there. Actually, I don't know why the lights aren't on right now. Give us a lot more light. So another thing is, yeah, like I did the double switch. I did the double switch because I wasn't sure if maybe in the future I'd want to um, add an exterior switch. I've yet to close this thing, so I don't know exactly how well this thing is going to close. I guess it closed. So that's that. You can kind of see the toggle here on the side. Um, so I'll be able to turn my lights on, off, shut it completely off from the disconnect too. So when I come to the trailer, I'll be able to just clip that on, turn that on, lights come on. Uh, and then obviously the opposite. I could probably just leave that switch on and just turn them off here. Could I do that? Huh. Well, it slowly turns off. I don't know if that's good. There are so many mosquitoes out here right now. Um, so yeah, turn that on, turn that on, lights come on, you can dim them all the way up, down a little bit. I did do the dimmer, I researched it, and from what I found, um, it does draw less power as you dim it down, which makes sense, but some lights aren't, aren't like that. Some of them draw the same amount of power whether they're dimmed down or all the way up. Um, LEDs do draw less power when dimmed, so I installed this, so... Sometimes I might not need them all the way up. I just need to run in, grab something. I can keep them dim. Or if I really want it to be really bright in here, turn it all the way up. But at least I have that option. So, yeah. This was my this was my 12-volt uh, lighting system. I'm going to show you the lights. Um, they're 34-inch Tresco lights, and they're 5,000K. So I'll show you those in a second. So here are the lights. I did four down through. It's pretty bright. Lights the place up a decent amount. There's the dog. The walk through the trailer. It's one wall. Do a walk through the trailer. So here are the four lights I installed. Um, I mean, this is the left wall. It's kind of a mess. Still kind of organizing some stuff. The wall of batteries and random stuff thrown together. The wall of packouts. But yeah, so, I mean, the lights are pretty bright. Shelves that I built, kind of working out for now. But we'll dim it. Here are the controls. That's that toggle switch I was talking about. So we'll dim it. This is all the way up. It's definitely a decent amount of light. Dim it down, honestly. Even that would work. I had it somewhere around in this range, and this was plenty. Um, so yeah, in the future, I can attach something to that switch if I want. Um, got the battery. So I'll shut it off. Well... I guess I shouldn't do that because then you're not going to be able to see anything. Shut it off. Toggle off. I ran it up through. Ran it to the first light. They're all daisy chained together, so I come out of the light. I hit it underneath that. Came out. Hit this one. Went through to the next. Just kept doing that. Um, I wish the... Well, there's Miko. I wish the wire was black because it would have looked much better. Oh, there's even a bug. But... So far, this lighting system worked out really good. Uh, big fan of it. If you guys have any questions, just shoot me a comment and uh, let me know.